Good morning, Service Alliance community. How y'all doing today? Feeling pumped. Good. Woo! I'm excited. It's going to be a good day. We, we started our meeting, our day off today with our team meeting at seven o'clock. I made everybody cry with the empathy video they showed at Asti. Nice. It's always good to start the morning with a cry. <laughs> yep. I'm just excited about starting it with Zach. Maybe. I'm kind of fun. Maybe you're going to leave? Fun. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> I thought you meant you were going to leave. No. Someone's Sometimes I'm fun. Sometimes, uh, you know, I'm just here. You don't know which Zach you're getting on what day. It's like well, a I hope that we have that grumpy Zach. Zach. Is it grumpy it's, Zach or it's not Zach? grumpy Zach today? Grumpy <clears throat> Zach. It's uh, it's Zach that is out of his element because Mr. EJ is beach bumming it up today. So I'm a little, I'm a little off. If if uh, you're tuning in today and you see two lovely ladies above me in my ugly mug down here, no, you are not on the wrong day. I'm on the wrong day. No, they're they're <laughs> used to having us with EJ, so like. All right, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so what are we talking about today, Shana? You're driving um, the boat. So I am driving the boat. Um, we are going to be talking about common challenges that service home home service businesses have, and then a few ways that we can help over. You know, you can help set yourself up to overcome those challenges. Awesome. So, yeah, um, it's a uh, you know, it's going to be. You know, uh, service gonna... business owners are definitely challenged. <laughs> I know. I was born and raised with them, so. Do you know that? <laughs> yes, and we got a lot of people coming on saying good morning. Dr. Yeah. Dan in there. Garrison, Adam, Gary, and Jeremy decided he's flipping to Spanish. I'm not sure. Maybe someone should hit the hit the reset button on Jeremy. Just make sure it's on the on the right channel. <laughs> he's preparing for his cruises. Oh, well, fair enough. Fair enough. We'll yeah, we just found out that he's going to have to miss book club two times while he's leading the book club. <laughs> hey, that sounds that that sounds vaguely familiar. <laughs> it's the best time to pick a pick leading the book club. That corner. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? I travel. When I'm I, leading, I try to be there. I'm just glad it's not my turn anymore because even though I love doing it, there's some feeling of stress that comes along with knowing that you have to be there to do it Yeah, that is removed when you're just coming there to participate. So I, I liked it. I liked leading it, but I'm glad that it's not my turn anymore. If that makes yeah. any sense. It, it, it certainly does. Sure. Uh, I mean, I started the club and now my Wednesdays are so messed up that I haven't been there in months. <laughs> no, haven't. Well, you're missed. Happens. We're getting ready to start a new book next week, though, so it's a good time to join. And it's very possibly one you've never read. I'm excited about it. I've like read every read. single book. It, oh, and I, I bring it with forward. me. I'm going to read it this weekend. Interestingly, we just finished a book by Donald Miller, and then I picked up this book and started reading the foreword. It, the book is called Love Does by Bob Goff, and the foreword for that book is written by Donald Miller. So it's kind of funny. So maybe we should pick our next book by picking one that this author wrote the foreword for. I don't know. It could be a gamble. It could be a new way to pick books. All right. Uh, Jenny, you want to pray us in? Sure. Get us, in, get us sure. into the topic here. I'd love to. Um, since we had our beginning of our day with um, an empathy video, um, that might influence my prayer a little bit. So God bless this day. We're so grateful for just another day to serve your people. We're grateful for this community and um, just the opportunity to be here on this podcast, talking about things that are important to our businesses. Uh, help us keep an open mind and welcome some of the topics and be able to think outside the box. 
Um, and most of all, help us to serve the people that are the most difficult to serve with love and grace, because we truly don't know what's going on in their lives and what might be contributing to their negative attitude that day. And help us to just love them, support them in whatever we can do to help brighten their day and whatever we can fix for them. Um, help us do it with love and patience. And that we don't bring any negative energy to the next person that we're serving. Um, we ask all of this in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. We love you. We we ask your blessing on our day. Amen. Amen. Ma'am, mm. I am going to be reading from Proverbs thirteen twenty. Whoever walks with the wise becomes wise, but the companion of fools will suffer harm. Mm. Powerful. So, yeah, and I feel like it was it sort of goes along with some of what we have to talk today. So um, so really, the first thing I would like to do is just what are some challenges that home service businesses have? Um, Jenny, what is one that you can think of right off the bat? And if you are listening, you can go ahead and put them inside of the, the chat. Love to hear from you guys. What are some of the challenges that you feel that um, is, is out there for, for you? For us specifically, we're in an area that doesn't have a parts supplier right next door that we can pop in and grab a part that we need. So one of our challenges okay. is identifying what things we can keep on the trucks for first call completes and with being efficient with parts management, because we know that that black hole can actually put somebody out of business in this industry. So um, we're not in a major city. We're in a suburb and the closest uh parts shop that you could walk right into is raleigh so that's two hours from us um i know we're not alone in that but there's a lot of people in metropolitan areas that have that luxury they can just pop in but there there are a lot of companies that have a real challenge with parts management zach what do you think what is what is a challenge oh i know the number one challenge um okay what is that for, for every single service business is not knowing your numbers and really that goes through to any business i was just talking yeah. with uh, my tile setter yesterday and we were running through some of the stuff and just just going over life and business in general and i've sat with him in his office and gone like okay here's how much it costs to do business here's how much it costs to you know run your truck here's how much it you know and so we broke his numbers down he's like dude i've never gone that far into my numbers right I said, well, that is how you set your goals. If you know at least roughly what your averages are and roughly what your costs are, if you, <clears throat> the number one thing is know your numbers. It doesn't matter what industry you're in. We were talking about it in the roofing office. We're sitting there and he goes, guys don't know their numbers, right? Like they don't know their numbers, so they can't set yep. their profit margin accordingly. They can't set their targets accordingly. Um, yep. And, and I saw it in full. It's across every service industry. I don't care what what industry it is. People don't know their numbers. And the minute you can grab hold on it, um, the better off you are. Right. So in the appliance repair, I did not know my numbers. I moved to flooring. I learned to figure out them numbers really quick because I knew that would make me successful. I came into roofing. Yeah, I can tell. I can tell you how many roofs it's going to take to buy the new truck that I want to buy. Because I know my numbers, I can set those goals. I can look ahead, and then I can extrapolate out how many phone calls do I got to make, how many emails do I got to send, how many letters do I got to mail. You know what I mean? So. Knowing your numbers, it doesn't matter the industry. That is number one. You could be Shana and not know your numbers, and it would be a big problem, right? It's it is right. the biggest thing that all yeah. business owners face. And well, and I, I feel that it's an easy one. It's an easy one to just forget about because you have so much other things on your plate to not to not keep that in front of you. So Dan says once you have your foundation set and know your numbers, finding it and, and training techs is big as well. 100%. Mm -hmm. You can't do what that until you know your numbers. Like all this is right. building, all you, this yeah. is building on each other. I love it. You don't even know yeah. if you can afford to hire somebody and pay them a salary if you don't know your numbers. But taking a step backwards from that, before you can even look at your numbers, you have to be capturing that information somewhere. So you you can't be just like, 
using your credit card all the time and or whatever and like money's coming in money's going out you need to have some type of bookkeeping software and or even an excel spreadsheet but you need to be capturing that information before you can even look at it so that is like the very first step well and it's a lo you know you get some owners they'll try to guess well i think my revenue is this or i think my percentage of material is this you can think all you want, but where is the actual true data for sure? One hundred percent. Um, what some other challenges I was thinking of, like even like challenges of working with family versus mm -hmm. you know <laughs> someone that you can just get rid of if things do, if things go awry. Um, you know, you work with your spouse, Jenny. You know what that's like. Um. I, mm -hmm. I've I've even got my son in our business now, so it is another added challenge in there. So, um, being a third generation owner myself, my um, my dad and my husband have gotten into plenty of fights over the years, and I'm and I'm pretty confident I remember fights between my dad, um, my uncle, which was my mom's brother, and my grandpa, which was my mom's dad. Also, like I remember one time my dad kicked my uncle out of the car and told him he could oh, find wow. his own <laughs> right way home. And this was, you know, back before you could call Uber. This was in the um, late 80s, early 90s. So, um, well, so you know, your working spouse, with family. Your, your spouse, you're <laughs> kicking them out of the bed. It, it's worse than the car. You're like, get out of the bed. <laughs> you know, the, the best piece of advice that I got when I got into the appliance repair, um, as I was being, you know, kind of groomed to take over the business, he looked at me and he goes, don't hire family. Just, 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 just don't, just don't, I've done it. Don't do it. You know, this is a guy who's been doing appliance repair for 40 years and he, he's sitting there and he's just got like, he was always a very cheerful guy. And he's like, just, just don't, just, just don't hire family. Just, funny just thing don't, for us, don't do it. <laughs> for us, we have a VP that now, like she is absolutely amazing. She literally sits between me and Jason in our office She's a mediator between the two of us whenever we need to talk and we're struggling to find the right words. Um, and she's also the mediator between our son and Jason, too, mm. because they're a lot alike. And so they they can butt heads. I see Jason as a problem then. It seems like everybody needs a mediator between themselves and Jason. I'm just kidding, Jason. Jason. I love you. <laughs> Um, and then some other challenges of, um, do you have systems set up for technicians? Do you have systems set up, up in place to be able to run those calls and make profit while you're out on the calls? So there's lots and lots of challenges that, that we have. Um, slow seasons. Oh my goodness. You know, and slow seasons are in every single industry. Our slow season for electrical was December, January, and February. And then people start getting their taxes back. And that's when they start doing the changing out of the light fixture or remodeling their home with the electrical, whatever it may be. So every industry has slow seasons. And so even overcoming some of those. Um, but there are systems in place, and that's what I want to talk about today. There are things that you can actually put in place to help you to be able to um, overcome some of those challenges, but also have support systems put in place so that when you do have a challenge, you're not trying to figure it out on your own because any challenge that you come across is not going to be a new challenge. More than likely, every challenge you've had, one of us, if not all of us, have had. Um, so the first one is actually establishing strong support systems. So um, first, why, Zach, I, I know this is one for you. Why do you feel that having a strong support system, like what can a strong support system do for you, for your company? Yeah. So, um, I mean, I, let's, let's go back to the last two weekends for me. Right. Um, in the roofing industry, we door knock a lot. Right. So the first Saturday I was in a neighborhood, it was a really great neighborhood. I already, I got 10 houses in that neighborhood and they're, you know, all at varying stages. So I go to door knock that Saturday. I'm like, ah, oh, it should be good. Man, I was just defeated after that, right? So I call my wife up and I'm like, this door knocking's going like crap. This neighborhood is dead. And like they want to see these houses done before they even want to look at me. And she she walked through it and she goes, Listen, 
you know, you're working hard for our family. Here's where your goals are. And she kind of reframed that focus for me. And so I was like, okay, that's the, the pump up I needed. So I pick up the phone. I call, um, <clears throat> I call a home inspector that I had worked with before through BNI almost seven years ago. And uh, I'm like, hey, do you still need your, do you still need your roof inspected? And she's like, yeah, yeah, I do. So I go up there and I check it out. And she's like, yeah, I still got the property in Lockport. I'm like, do you need that one checked out? I go and check it. So now we got two more properties from what was a bad day. This past Saturday, I'm walking and knocking and EJ's on my headphones. And the first the first old man, after having another bad morning, the first old man, he's like, oh, well, you know, I don't need it. So I talked through this and EJ's like, dude, good job. Like you overcame every objection that guy could have had. And then the next five houses, door slammed. One guy went out his back door, got in his truck, rolled down his window and flicked me off as he drove away. Like, wow, oh, you could have just said, I'm not interested. Like, that's <laughs> all you had to do. But but the point of that is I had a support system behind me. I had EJ encouraging me. I had, you know, the owner of 3JM is going, dude. Get those reps in. Let them slam the doors on you. That's just more practice going through this. That's more callous to get over like, so what? Who's next, right? So having that support system, no matter what you're doing, and, and again, that's a, just a big, long story for you need people in your corner. And sometimes it's just to go, listen, here's where your goals are. You're doing great. Yeah. And sometimes it's cool. like, hey, get, get, you know, here's a towel. Let's wipe your face off. It's okay. <laughs> let's, let's keep going. You know, we're proud of you, whatever. So those support systems do make a big difference, especially if your words of affirmation person like myself. Yeah. So one support system that I was really, really thinking about was the masterminds and um, mm. Appliance Alliance has a huge mastermind. Jenny, I know that you're hugely involved in your mastermind. So talk to me about what exactly a mastermind can do for, for you. Yeah. So I, um, I actually have a few in my life. So I, I think it's, it's such an important tool that I think I might be addicted to it. Um, <laughs> so on Monday night, we have um, every single Monday at 8 PM, we have our appliance mastermind group. Um, and I think, the reason that we have different ones is because they all bring something different to the table. They're all a little different. Um, I don't think that these types of structures have to be competing with each other because they are all serving kind of a different thing. So our Monday night one is very tactical. We actually totally addicted. He's, 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 he's right. ratting you out. Yeah. He's yes. Um, I'm so addicted that I've created something like that in my own community here locally to bring all kinds of businesses together. And we do that one every Thursday at 4 p.m. Um, so, but on our Monday night one, it's only appliance companies and we support each other. Right, exactly, um, Andrew. So um, we create goals that we can achieve within the next week, usually three to five things. Um, we keep them simple so that we have a good chance of achieving them from week to week. Um, and then we hold each other accountable every single time. And if somebody keeps on saying they didn't get something done, we really get on them. And we're like, what is going on? Why are you not getting this done? And what can we do to help you? So that's the community part of that is really not just holding somebody accountable with a stick, but also being there to say like, what can I do to help you get through this? And how can we solve this problem together? Um, and yeah. Monday Night Mastermind has been consistent now for a while in our lives. And we've grown to be quite close with the people in that group to the point where we're praying for each other. Um, yes, we do move the needle. So like we're getting things done because of that accountability that we might have just put off. Um, and then on our Thursday one, it's local businesses. So we sometimes can talk about local struggles, like, and how we can reach our local community. And we um, talk about my framework that I've created for 16 points of looking at 16 different things in your business and setting goals around those different items. Um, and then we have a peer group for UASA that we meet once a month, and we're talking about a little bit more long term things. And we might be problem solving things in the appliance industry that are 
um, across the country as well, different unique things that we're all working on together and we all have unique skills that we bring to the table. Then I have Shana on Fridays who we meet together. We're each other's accountability partner and we sometimes focus on more um, holistic, personal things that we're working on instead of just business so that we're taking care of ourselves as people as well. Um, so I believe so strongly in this concept of surrounding yourselves, like your scripture verse that you read, with people that are wiser than yourself about things, um, that hopefully I can be wiser than something for that other person and they're better at something than I am. And without that in your life, I think you're just, you are being a fool. If you think you know everything, you can solve it all on your own, then you're the fool. Look in the mirror because you're the one that that isn't making a good choice there. So um, yeah, sorry for the rant, but that is like, I could talk about that for hours, how important that is. No, it is. It is super important to have that support system backing you and to have that accountability backing you. <clears throat> no matter what you do, you need an inner circle, right? Like, right. Um, you got to have those people around you, whether they're in your industry, not in your industry. And it's people holding you accountable to those goals you set. I send my tile setter. He's got a picture of what my goal sheet is. My money goal for the year, my roof goal for the year. The things that I want to do, emergency fund, paying mm -hmm. back debt, blah, blah, blah. Like the whole, he's got the whole list. And so, hey, how you doing? How many roofs you got? How's it go? You know what I mean? Like, so being able to check in on that. Hey, are you working on your attitude? Are you working on whatever principle it is that week? I, I that trees grow both ways that I shared in the one group. I got that from him we talk about different principles. So yeah, same thing that you and Shana do, like having that inner circle mm -hmm. and not everyone's going to be in your inner circle. That yep. took me a long or, time to learn. Mm -hmm. Or you can grow out of that circle also. So right. are you going to break people up with got, me, Shana? Is that what you're no, saying? But people, <laughs> <laughs> not yet. Not yet. No, you know, because, because we, we grow and we develop, develop. God can put people in our lives for a season. Right. And, mm -hmm. and it's really, truly also identifying that. And sometimes um, we feel, I feel like, like when that's happened, like I've had to been kicked in the butt before I realized, oh crap, I should have listened to God sooner. Um, so when God says it's time to move on, do not stop. But yeah, like as far as accountability, like the, um, and establishing your strong system, there are people out there. It is, the more you grow, the really, truly, the harder is to find. Like Jason and I were talking about this last night. Like, the 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 more you grow, so many of our area and so many of the people around us are stagnant, and they'll never grow. They'll never develop. But there are people out there, and I'm so thankful for online stuff because without the online, I wouldn't have Jenny. I wouldn't have. Um, I wouldn't still have Zach here. Like Zach was a client of ours back in the day, um, and he had to move on for the season. I broke the and pricing for y'all. Sorry. He, he broke, he actually just broke my office help. We weren't my office help at that time. Um, he completely broke it so much. So we had to change our name to my office help. Um, but you know, if it wasn't for these platforms, I wouldn't have them in our lives. So there are platforms out there. Like it doesn't have to be someone that lives down the road from you. So establishing the masterminds, like 100%, if you're not a mastermind, you need to get on to get in one, whether it's in the Service Alliance group, the UASA, or even more than one, because different mm -hmm. masterminds can bring different things to your business. Um, getting an accountability partner is not the easiest thing. I have gone through many over the years and, and life comes in the way and we've split up which is not a bad thing. I'm still in, in um, connection with every single one of my accountability group, but they're in different seasons than I am now. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm with Jenny right now. We've been in accountability for a year now. Asti actually was our one year anniversary for our mm -hmm. accountability. Um, but then so, also if you've got that support system at home, even that's a huge one for you just to be able to go home and just, just fall into that your um, spouse's arms and just say, I just need a hug today because <laughs> mm -hmm. there are those days. So one little important thing in any accountability situation is that you're receptive to that criticism and that you receive it with yeah. the love that it's intended and take a really hard look at yourself and what you're doing. Um, I tell people a lot of times um, the first step to owning your outcome is owning your outcome. So 
you have to own the things that you're not doing in your life or the things that you're doing that you shouldn't be doing that are resulting in the outcome that you're getting. So when you're when you start surrounding yourself with people that are wiser than you, you're going to get some really hard feedback that you don't want to hear. Um, we just had that in our mastermind on Monday. Like I was struggling with something in our office. Um, I brought it to our group. Um, they basically said, this is something that you're not doing right as a leader and you need to correct what you're doing. And it was so great because you just don't realize you get into a pattern and you don't realize that you're the one that's responsible for it. So having that um, ability to receive that constructive criticism from those people that you surround yourself with, I think that's super important for your personal growth. I love this. So, one, Saul. This is, this is a good question. How do you know if you're in the right circle? Can you share tips from me? It's, you know, I, if I'm in the right circle, I should be able, I should be able to share some, even like, even if I'm the low man, I'm the small one in the group, I should be able to share some. But the biggest thing is, is are you walking away and do you feel like you're growing and you're implementing what they're sharing with you? Like, are you, are you actually getting something from the group as well as are you able to give to the group too? Sometimes, sometimes, if, especially if you're just coming to the group, sometimes it's all about getting and soaking it in. But to me, it's, you know, are you, are you getting something from the group that can be helpful? What do you guys think? I agree with that. I, yeah. I, I feel, I think you should feel challenged. Challenge is a good word for sure. Mm -hmm. I, this, this is like, I've had to leave circles, right? Like, because it was the wrong place to be. Um, and, and you know when you're in the right spot, when you walk in, the values match. Have you have you looked inside yourself? Like Jenny was talking about it before. That's something in her that was wrong, right? Mm -hmm. have, have you taken the moment to self-reflect, to figure out who you are, what your goals and values are? And if you're around people and they're not pushing you towards those goals, if they're not living those same values or similar values to what you're trying to live, um, you're probably in the wrong circle. When when I was around people that were negative all the time, guess what? I was negative all the mm -hmm. time. That is not what I wanted. I was in the wrong circle. You feel this. I don't know. how It's tension. Like you feel this tension, the stress. Right. And and maybe you can't identify exactly what it is. But look at the people around you. Mm -hmm. And if they're not the kind of people that like you would introduce to your family, it's probably the wrong circle and it's time to make a move. And then when you walk into the right circle, you're going to know the mm -hmm. minute I walked in three JM and I'm looking at their core values on the wall. I'm like, I'm home. I, yeah. I, I know exactly where I'm supposed to be. You know, just don't leave a circle and don't, and not get back in one. It's really truly about, because there's been times I'm like, I need accountability and I struggle to sort of pick and choose one and it can go the the same for being in a circle in a mastermind. Um, but you need that. Like I needed that. So, so don't, don't just leave one without the intention of, and the actual view. Um, like it's right there. I'm going to get into another one. What do you say for me? I'm not only, and not only am I getting something, but what I can bring to the table as well. Most of the time I feel I can take more than I could ever give, but I hope I do bring something to the table. I'm sure. And that do. is a good indicator too. As soon as you start giving way more and all of a sudden you're getting zero out of it, you need to find at least another table to sit at yes. because at yeah. that point, now you're the one that's guiding everyone else. And so you need, you need to be fed yeah. somehow too. So you have like you almost have to have that overlapping circle when you get to that point. Mm -hmm. um, yep. And if you find that that table that you're the one giving and they're not learning, leave it. It's time to leave it. It's if great. they, if they yeah, are not embracing that. Yeah. 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 I think that's a really good point. Going, like it's okay if you become the one that is leading the group, but you have to make sure that you're also somewhere with people that are yeah. further along than you so that you can be challenged. Um, 
I, I thought of something that Shana and I talked about um, a few months ago, which is growth mindset versus fixed mindset. And for me, I think surrounding yourself with people in your group that are um, speak with love and and kindness, but also with really a growth mindset. If you have to have people that yeah. are willing to continuously improve and grow or you will get stuck. And if you want to read more on that in your reader, um, it's, it's, uh, I got bored after the second three chapter, but there's still, there's still things to learn in the others. It's called mindset. And it really, truly talks about how to identify a fixed mindset from a growth mindset. Um, although we typically still bounce between the two, but um, it is a great book. Um, what did he, what did he say? Almost ha have to ask, am I not getting enough or am I not listening? Not mm -hmm. listening is a huge thing. I mean, how many times have we been part of groups and we walk out or just, and we sort of just shove what they've said in the back burner when all reality, like we really, truly needed to take that and grab that for sure. Yeah. Um, we don't There's have a whole lot of time left. I do want, I, I would like to hit these other, um, yeah, the other points and at least hit them. Um, the next one was implementing efficient processes. So let's just take a few minutes and talk about processes and why it is important. Jenny, why don't you go ahead and take that one? Well, this is definitely my area of expertise in my daytime full-time job, and that is um, process improvement. You can't improve a process if you don't have one to begin with. So um, it's really important for people to know what's expected of them. And the funny thing is, in our meeting this morning, I was just talking about how I'm the plumber with the leaky faucet when it comes to this, because I manage about 2,000 policies and procedures for our lab and and keep all of those straight. I don't write them all, but I, in our job, in our um, business, I'm not the best at actually getting those down on paper. Um, so we're working on it. It's a work in progress. Um, but I think it's really important to outline. Um, we, we have a very rigid outline in the hospital format that we have to stick to because of regulatory things, but it presents a really good outline for everybody. And the first thing is, what is the principle and the purpose? You know, what are you trying to achieve with this policy or procedure? The title should be really simple. Um, and then you're going to outline what kind of tools people need for that. And then you're going to outline the steps in a really clear way. And it doesn't have to be yep. all written down. It can be a video. It can be um, some kind of tutorial people can click on um, and watch something. Um, there's an app called Tango or an ex a Chrome extension called Tango that you can record the steps of an online process. So there's lots of ways to make that process for people that they can follow. But the important thing is that everybody's doing it the same way every time. Well, I'm going to point out like a small one that Jason always did. Like this was a process that drove him nuts. And that was putting the lock on the back of our box trucks wrong. Because when you put the lock on wrong, it was very difficult to get it off. So his like was as simple as creating, he created a 20 second video on how to put the lock on correctly. And he sent it out to everyone. And every time he hired someone new, that was one of the first things he sent them. This is how you put the lock on watch the video and do it right for, <laughs> for now on. And then if he ever found the lock wrong, he would resend the video out to all of us. Cause you know, he didn't know who did it. Um, it was even things like that. Like what are those little tiny things that maybe you're, maybe every technician you ever hire does that annoys you. Um, create a process for that. What is a process, the step process on how to take care of your customers? Create a create a process for that. From the moment they even leave the van to the moment that they walk out the door of the customer's house, we had every single step written down and this is the process to go. So um, the next one is training and development. So without training, we're going to fail. So Zach, do you want to take a little bit about training and development? Just talk a few minutes on that. Yeah. Continuing education is super important, right? So <clears throat> every Monday we have a meeting We're and you're like, wait, what, what more can you learn about roofs? Like, um, but each week we have someone different presenting to us on Monday. It's very intentional. And if we're not there, the owner of the company is on that phone and like, you can feel him throttling your neck for not being at the education so <laughs> but how how do you get to the next level you get that by learning these new skills by acquiring and applying the new skills and so it's if podcast it's as simple as podcasts it's 
hopping on a course it's showing up to the live training events when they have them right like you have to go through and you have to have that continuing education your mastermind can play into that if you show up to a mastermind if you show up to the new mastermind series that we have going pretty soon um that's that's the point like it's to help you sharpen and hone these skills because you can't sustain the long run if if you don't continue to learn new things you can't teach an old dog new tricks well that old dog better start learning some new tricks or mm -hmm. it's going to be <laughs> irrelevant pretty soon right, right. so yeah I, I i think of the owner the original owner of gordon's appliance floyd gordon he came to me at 72 years old and goes, listen, the industry's changing. I know I got to start looking up parts. I got to look up manuals in the house. Teach me how to use a smartphone. Mm. 72 years old, he knew that he had to learn and flex and grow to continue to stay relevant within the appliance industry. So if, if you're out there and you're pushing back against learning something new, you're going to be irrelevant soon. Mm -hmm. Go yeah. and challenge mm -hmm. yourself. So the, the last one is, <laughs> yep, 100%. Yep. The last one is monitoring and adjusting. And we, and Zach hit this up earlier, like knowing your numbers. Like if you don't know your numbers and you don't, you're not monitoring them and numbers are everything from what is your percentage of, of rev, what's your revenue, what's your percentage mm -hmm. of material, what's your percentage of labor to any kind of KPIs, what's your technician's closing rate, what is their average ticket, um, what's your CSR's closing rate, anything at all whatever the KPIs are. And, and all of these, the monitoring and adjusting, the training and development, the implementing system processes, it all rolls back that if you have a mastermind in place, if you have a support system in place, they can be there to help you. If you don't know what to monitor, they're the ones that's gonna help you be able to do that. If you don't know what to train on or how to even get started, mm -hmm. they're the ones that you can go to and say, how did you do it? Show me and teach me how right. I can do it. The same for, goes for the processes. If you need a process done, it's very likely the process has been created by probably every single one of the people in your mastermind mm -hmm. group that has process. Like it's yeah. there already. Don't recreate the will. Get what they have, adjust it for your company and then run with it. And mm -hmm. if you've got that mastermind in place, you've got that support system in place. And that was one of the reasons why, like it was, to me, that was the most important one to talk about because everything can roll back to that group that you're part of, that they are the ones that can help you figure out what it is that you need to do. What's the next steps to get you so that you can overcome some of these challenges that, that you're facing in your business right now. And if you want to want a good start on those processes, servicealliancegroup.com, we have a whole world oh, of the SOPs currently in place. We have more coming this year. Mike is out there working hard Yay. on those. Um, so, and so, you know, Zach, you know what that served for me? The, mo the most helpful thing about that library that you guys have is just that it gave me a list of the things that I needed to do, like the processes I needed to have. So even if that gives, just helps you think about the most important things to tackle first, then it's worth looking at that library for sure. We actually had, uh, saw a post in Tommy Mello's group that someone asked about our SOPs and someone goes, dude, I, I thought they were a great foundation. And then I took chat GTP yeah. and kind of tweaked it for myself. And it's like, that was the point. That's awesome. Yeah. I'm so glad that someone latched yeah. on to like we created something that's there and it's generic for everyone. Then you use chat GTP and really kind of refine it for mm -hmm. what is unique to your company, your state, whatever, and run with it. It's so cool. It's yeah. so cool to see someone yeah. in a in a different group doing that. Real quick, my office help.com. That is Shana's company and they can help you out. And Jenny at outcomeacademy.com. So reach out to them. And then again, servicealliancegroup.com. If you're an all access member, you have those SOPs. And we have masterminds coming. You should have received an email to let you know that uh, we are going to be launching those soon. It is a limited drop for free. So that's it. Awesome. Great Thank to you. be with you, ladies. Hopefully, I, I did a good job covering for the beach bum EJ today. <laughs>
Just fabulous. You were in a great mood today. Thank you. Yeah. All Thank right. You, Thank you for bringing the topic, Shana. Appreciate you. Uh, appreciate all you guys out there in the audience. Thank we'll you. see you next time. Have a great day. Bye. Bye, guys.